session. Today I will talking uh, about Drupal for Symfony developers, but before we start, let me just introduce myself. My name is Antonio Peric Majar. I am the co-founder and CEO at Locustic. Uh, I'm also doing some open source contribution, not as much as I want because I don't have time regarding company and everything else. Also, we started uh, the Symfony Croatia user group in our hometown. It's split in Croatia. And here's all my contacts, so if you need anything, you can tweet or send me email or whatever. Uh, regarding the Locustic, we are a digital agency providing our clients with web and mobile development and design services located in a split. Uh, at the moment, we have around 20 employees and 25% of our team are the women, so that's some cool fact about us. Before we started, a few questions. So. If you can raise the hands, how many of you are Drupal developers? So, that's good. <laughs> Symfony developers. And then the last question doesn't have the sense. So, Symfony developers with Drupal knowledge. Because this talk is, actually I had the other title for this talk, it's Drupal 101 for Symfony developers, so you are like perfect audience for this talk. I will give you a brief introduction introduction what you can build with symphony knowledge inside Drupal without knowing anything about anything about Drupal so before we start the small disclaimer my world is not Drupal it's a symphony so I'm like let's call it symphony developer but I was like curious about Drupal and to see how it is built on the top of symphony and what I can do with my knowledge from the symphony world and the symphony and Drupal are not the same thing so symphony is a framework like we all know that and Drupal is a CMF, like content management framework, built on top of Drupal. We will see that a little later, but before, a few things from the history. So how, how does this happen in 2012 when uh, Fabian Potencier wrote this uh, blog post about Symfony 2 meets Drupal? It was a huge step for community, and it was like really good... Uh, uh, it was a really good step for Symfony because that was like huge award for the framework to tell like you are doing good thing and we will use that to build a very very powerful CMF. So what actually does mean is that Drupal 8 doesn't use the full stack uh, Symfony, it uses the components, but most of the components from the standard stack of the Symfony. Moving Drupal to the more modern stack, so Drupal was not object-oriented in Drupal 7 or Drupal 6, now it's moving to the Symfony and we all know that the Symfony has high-quality high code in object-oriented way. Uh, building more powerful CMF on top of Symfony components, more learning for Drupal developers or more learning for Symfony developers, depends on what, which side you are. And the most important thing was connecting two big communities. As we know, in a, in a PHP world, there is a lot of talks about this team is like, we have a lot of different communities, like Drupal, Laravel, WordPress, Symfony, whatever community. And they are all like, there is huge amount of diversity be in, inside them. So the composer did a huge step in connecting that communities, but easy with Symfony, Drupal with Symfony are more, are more bi are bigger step than just composer because they are connecting to big communities. So if you are, for example, Symfony developer, now you are familiar with Easy Publish, you are familiar with uh, Drupal, and the good thing is that they are not reinventing the wheel, because in the past, Drupal and Easy Publish were built on top of their own frameworks. Now they are built on top of proven framework, in this case, Symfony, which I will say it's one, maybe one, not maybe, but one of the best PHP frameworks at the moment. So who is this for? Uh, Drupal is for content strategists and site administrators, so for the people who are managing the content of the website, who are providing the visitors with the content. Current version of the Drupal is uh, A3.2, and it is for people that are building stuff without writing the code. Symfony is a standard framework, so allow us, it gives us the tool for building the good application, makes writing better code and things like that. Uh, so. 
In this case, what are you getting? You are getting the complete CMF thing from the Drupal with cache, with API, with templating, with a lot of helpers methods on top of the proven framework, in this case, Symfony, which allows you to build great web applications. So one, one let's, let's call it one use case, is booking system for, for tu tourist agency. So for example, from the Drupal, you will get all the content management things, like providing the, your offer to the end clients. But at the moment, there is no plugin for building the bookings. So with your Symfony knowledge, in easy way, you will be able to build that part of your application, like using the Symfony in a way that you are using that in your everyday life. In a, in a Drupal 8, there are three types of the knowledge. First type of the knowledge is Drupal knowledge that exists in a seven, six versions, like entities, sorry, like nodes, like fields, like content types that Drupal have. In other words, if you, if you used already Drupal 6 or 7, you will be familiar with the concepts in the Drupal 8 also. Second, par second part of the knowledge is the Symfony-based knowledge, like dependency injection, like Symfony components, and that's the part of the, this talk. And the third part of the knowledge is the new things that come in Drupal 8, like plugins. We won't talk about that. It's out of the scope of this talk. So what we are focusing today is this second part. It's a symphony part in a, in a Drupal CMF, CMS, whatever you want. So the main difference is this. This is symphony full stack here. You are all familiar with that. And this is how Drupal 8 is built. In a core, there is symphony components, Drupal components, some partnered libs you will see to it. On top of that, there are built Drupal core libraries. Then we have Drupal core models, Drupal contributing models, which are, again, built on a top of Symfony components. And then we have different distributions. So you have in a Drupal, you have similar as a Linux, similar as Symfony at the moment. Probably that will change in Symfony 4. You have different distributions, which you, you select distribution and start building your website regarding the components you need. OK, this is the list of the Symfony components that are used in a, in a Drupal. You will see that most of them are included in Symfony standard edition, some standard distribution. But one component that is like very important for us from the Symfony world is the form. Form is missing. So they are not using the form component in a Drupal. They are using some other library from the Drupal world. It's, maybe it's a similar in a context, using more arrays than objects. But mm, it's not from the Symfony. And the most important thing of the Drupal is dependency injection container. Uh, it's a backbone of the Drupal. So as same as your Symfony application, where everything is in dependency injection container and you are using service-oriented architecture, the same thing is in a Drupal. So every part of the code that you will use in a custom bundles, in sorry, in a custom modules will be in a dependency injection. So whatever you do in a Drupal with your code, you will probably touch dependency injection container. Dependency injection container is responsible for HTTP kernel, request response, controllers, even dispatching listeners and subscribers. HTTP is again used from the Symfony, so it's HTTP foundation. Uh, we will start with uh, setting up the development environment. Then I will show how the code in Drupal is structured. And then we will build really, really simple module to see how easily you can start. So first thing, if you want just to test Drupal without researching to the code, is to install it. And you can, uh, you can use simply, uh, simply, simply test.me. You go there, enter the project name. You can choose different version of Drupal's, of different distribution of Drupal's. In few clicks, you will get your Drupal instance running on a server without knowing anything about Drupal. Second is to use Acquia Dev Desktop. Acquia is the company behind Drupal. So you will get the environment that includes Dev Desktop app, Apache Web Server, Percona, Percona MySQL database, PHP, PHP admin, everything you need to start working with is Drupal. Or you can just use PHP built-in server, Vagrant or Docker, whatever environment you are using for Symfony 2 application, you can use it, or Symfony 3, you can use it for Drupal. Personally, I'm using Vagrant machine. And it's quite easy to set up, same as Symfony application. Just download the code, clone it, composer, install, and that's all. As a Symfony, Drupal also has some tools, like console tools. 
First one is a Drush. Drush is like more system management tool. So if you see the list of things what you can do with uh, Drush, you can update the core contribute, you can download models, enable models, clean cache, update, database, import config, export, deploy to the server, restore Drupal, backup Drupal. And Drush is very, very powerful tool. And if you are going to start with a Drupal, you should have installed Drush and, and use it. Drush could be a one of the topics for entire talk. How to install Drush? You can install it with Composer globally, and then it's quite easy to use it. So just in console, you make the Drush list, and you get the all, uh, all the commands that you can use with the Drush. Or if I use Drush grab user, I will get all the commands that are related to the user. So add role, block, cancel, create information, login, password, remove role, or whatever. Second nice console tool is Drupal console. This is something more closer to the Symfony developer because it's, it is built on top of the Symp Symfony console. So it's, it is similar to the Drush, but it's not the same. So they can work in, a, uh, they can do the same things, but also the different things. So if we see what Drupal console can, it's like similar to Drush, but there are some generate things. Like in Symfony, you have generate entity, generate forms or something like that. With this, we can generate console command, generate entity, generate content type, generate entire skeleton for the modules, run a unit test, and things like that. These things here are same as uh, Drush. Yeah, again, it's uh, quite easy to install. We can install that as a dependency with the composer, or we can download it using Drupal Composer, it, or just install it, Drupal Console Launcher Global, and then it's quite easy to run it. It's just Drupal. Also, Drupal list will give you all the list of uh, commands that you have. It's quite a huge list, and you will see that works in a similar way as a Symfony. So if we just filter someone, for example, Drupal list grep module, we will get all the commands that are related to the models. For example, download, install, uninstall, update, generate, or things like that. Uh, third tool that I will suggest to using in some IDE, I will suggest PHP Storm. This is not sponsored or something like that, but he has Drupal support native. There is Symfony plugin for that, and it's not so much expensive, and it will make it will make your life much easier. Uh, installation: How to install Drupal 8, and what's under the hood? So first thing is to install Drupal 8. Uh, there are three ways how we can install Drupal. First one is using Drush. Second one is using Composer. Third one is just download zip, unpack it, and start using. As we are from the Symfony world, we will use Composer. So there are two packages that we can use from the Composer. That's Drupal Drupal, and that's Drupal Composer Drupal project. They are slightly different in their code structure and what we get from them. So first is a Drupal as it is, Drupal from from the Drupal, uh, so <coughs> sorry, from the Drupal repository, and this is open source project as a Kickstarter for composer-based Drupal sites. It provides some basic configuration that we will do manually here. Here is the main difference. So if you use the Drupal Drupal, you don't get the repositories config updates, scaffold files, installer path config. We will do this manually, and Drush and Drupal are not included. I prefer first one because it's it looks how Drupal should look. And this is, in my environment, this is installed globally. So let's use the first one. So composer create project Drupal Drupal. And before we start working, I'm sorry because I don't think you can read this, we need to add two things to, uh, to our composer file. One is repositories for Drupal models. So repositories Drupal type composer packages drupal.org slash eight. And second one is this part here where we need to add uh, installer paths for our models. We have two types of the models. One is contribution models that we can use as a third party models, similar as a bundle in Symfony. And of course, our custom made uh, modules. If we, if we add this, we can then use this in Composer. So Composer requires Drupal model name, for example, Drupal slash token, and he knows from what, from what repositories to pull the Drupal models. Without that additional line, Composer doesn't know where to pull that files. OK, after we complete the installation, we just need to run it in a browser. So your IP address of Vagrant machine or local host, 
slash index.php. It will, at the first, Drupal will check, do you have instance installed? If yes, he will show the website. If not, he will show you the installa installation process. Installation process takes four steps, I think. So which, which one edition you want to install, your configuration file, installing Drupal with our models, and some site information. And that's it. You will get fully running Drupal 8 instance with some dummy data here. Sorry for PHP UK. This is screenshots from PHP UK conference. And uh, uh, you, you, as I said, out of the box, you are getting caching. You are getting full content uh, custom types. You are getting caching. You are getting Twig as a template and much, much more things. I will say the most important thing is caching and the REST API in the core, not, not requiring any plugin. OK, let's add some content. We have an empty website. We want to test something. Let's add some content. Of course, we won't do that manually. We will use Drupal console. So Drupal list, grab create will give us this, this comments. And we will see that we have create nodes. So let's use that. Drupal will ask how, how how old should they be, and we'll create some, some number of them. For example, 50 in this situation. Sorry, 25. This is the ID. Uh, after that, we can test how our system works. And it works quite good even in development environment, as I said, because everything is cached. OK. As we are Symfony developers, something is missing. I will give you a hint what. And the thing is missing is web profile. It's not in core of the Drupal, but there is the module that gives you the web profiler. I, uh, for me personally, that is maybe the place when I'm doing some Symfony development, that is the place where I spend most of time when I'm debugging some request response thing. OK, it's called Devil. So Composer required Drupal Devil will give us an entire Drupal module and will give us the web profiler. So when we enable that, install new model Devil, we need to enable that. And we need to enable web profiler. OK, after that, we can also do that with a Drush or console. So Drush PM dash enable devil will enable the, the Drupal model. This is like, it's much easier to click when you first start working. But this is quicker way. And if you save seconds here, second there, you will save a lot of time if you start using console. Similar as in Symfony application, you won't generate entire entities manually writing the code, writing the configuration file and things, you will use console. So this saves the time. Also, you can download module, you can enable it, you can disable it with a console or Drush. And finally, we have web profiler there. With er everything that we have in, uh, in Symfony, we have it here. So version of a Drupal, what's the status code of the response, how much time we are using, how much, uh, how much request, which user is logged in. How many, template, how many templates blocks is rendered and things like that. So if we check here, we will see that status code is 200 OK. We are using view page controller handle method. This means that this is from the Drupal core. And the template that it's rendering this is view front end page one, a tweak file, of course. If we see other, so how much does it take to the to some response from the server, how much data is downloaded, time to first byte, and things like that. Also, there is devil module on the top here, which can, you can change some configuration. So if we go there, you will see that we have con configuration for the web profiler, so we can enable or disable some things. For example, if you are interested in, in events, which are the maybe the most important part of the Drupal, you will enable this. Of course, if you are interest, uh, interested in HTTP or mail, you will extend that. Or if you want to remove something, you can do also. The one thing to remember when you are doing some custom development for Drupal is cache clear, maybe like in every development. So if you are changing some system configuration files, routes, or something like that, you need to clear your cache. OK, so what's, what's under the hood of all these things? First, we will start with folder structures. So we have the folder that is called core. Inside it, we have lib. And inside it, we have Drupal. In Drupal, we have component and core. This is the core of the Drupal. A lot of things from the legacy. Why this is not, doesn't have PSR1, PSR2 uh, names? Because it's, it's 
still have a lot of legacy code inside it, which is wrapped in a new stack. And they want, of course, to keep all developers. Probably in version 9, it will be changed. But who knows what will happen. So the core is here. And we can go to other, fo to other folder. It's called modules. So the first one that already exists is contributed models and our devil module inside it. If we want to build some custom module, we will just put the name of the folder like PHP uh, day there and create our model. We will see that later. Also, the profiles. Profiles are something that we want to do additionally after we install the website. And Drupal also supports multi-website. Multi also, from the core, supports the multi-language website. So if you want to add something uh, additional after uh, installation, you will put it here. Also, we have sites folder. And there is our development local. Uh, there is settings files, like development ser uh, setting files, default setting files, and example sites. And you can add different configuration for every diff web website that is supported for from your Drupal installation. So for example, if you have five different websites, you can configure them in a different way here. Then we come to the team folder. That's obviously what is it. You will put your templates there. So your custom team that you are building for your website will go there. And we have in a package, we have editor config file. If you are using PHP Storm, you know that's something that is used for a coding standard. So uh, Symfony and Drupal have similar coding styles, but the big difference is that indent, sti indent size in, in Drupal is two, and uh, in Symfony it's four. But usually when I'm writing some custom modules, I'm using, I'm using the same standard as I'm using in a, in a Symfony way. OK. And this here is something, if you want to enable your local settings environment, you will go to the default settings PHP, and you will uncomment this line here to include settings local file, and then you will enable whatever you want. For example, debugging the templates file to get which files are included in rendering your template. OK. Uh, next, what I will talk about is how request response is working in a Drupal. So I assume you are all familiar with this picture from, uh, from Symfony. So we have some requests. We have some events, but it doesn't see on this projector. So request resolve controller. Then we have controller, and then we have some response. So everything that you are, that you are returning to the client is response from the HTTP foundation from the Symfony uh, component. And your request is, again, created as a HTTP foundation request object. So what actually is happening here when we are calling, how, how it is looking in Drupal? So first, it's bootstrapping the configuration. Read the settings PHP file, generate some settings dynamically, and stores both that global variable in a singleton settings object. Second thing is start class loader, and then start set up the Drupal error handler. Detect if Drupal is actually installed. If not, run the install script. If yes, go further. On the second step, we are creating the Drupal kernel. The Drupal kernel, kernel I implements the Symfony HTTP, uh, implements the Symfony kernel interface, but it's slightly different. They have the similar events you will see later, but the Drupal has some additional events, and you cannot use the bundles from the Symfony because of that in a Drupal. Third is initialize the service container. So in the first step, after the kernel is created, we already have entire uh, dependence injection container ready. Add container to the Drupal static class. This is because Drupal static class is created because we want to keep the legacy things. Attempt a serve page from the cache. So if there is cache, if the page is cached in Drupal on page on, on step five, it will be served to the client. If not, Load all variables, load other necessary procedure, include files, register stream wrappers, create HTTP request, let Drupal kernel handle it, and return is the response. Send the response, of course, terminate the request, and then if you want to hook on this event, you can do also. So it's like almost like the symphony, except a few different things. OK, this is. What's happening with the, with the 
request response in a, in, a, in a Drupal. This part here is almost the same as a symphony, and that's the regular flow of Drupal, or Drupal request response. You have the same kernel events, and then here you have some additional events regarding the content from the, from the Drupal. If we, if we are watching it this way, as we go further to the right, that's we are deeper in a Drupal. As we are going to the bottom, we are ending the request. As I said, this part here belongs to almost the same events as a symphony. You can to hook to any event. And this part here, I will zoom it, is, symf is a Drupal way. So we have some main content view subscriber, and we have some main content renderers. So what's happening here is that if, control if controller has a array that's the with response code that can be rendered, it will use some of the content renderers classes. So HTML renderer, dialog renderer, model renderer, Ajax renderer. If doesn't have the array to, to generate some content, it will generate four, 406 response and will return the Ajax. That's what's happening in this part. We have, uh, this is the pipeline. So after the controller return a render uh, array, the view will be triggered by the HTTP kernel. Main content view subscriber is subscribed to the view. Next main content view subscriber checks whether negation format is supported. If it is supported, it will return that support. If not supported, 406 JSON is response generated. Otherwise, render response is called. Render response can call these four renderers. So HTML, Ajax, Dialog, and Module. You can build your custom, of course, just implementing the interface, but these are supported in a Drupal. OK, so this is how HTML renderer looks. It implements main content renderer interface. And if we see what's handle method, you will see at the end that returns HTML response, which is basically the symphony response at the end. OK, next part is a routing. Uh, defining the routes use YAML file. It's quite similar to the symphony, but we have some additional things like defaults and requirements. I will go field by field later. The thing that you need to know here is that Symfony Standard Edition and uh, Drupal doesn't use the same routing. Uh, Drupal use CMF dynamic routing. So you, have, you can have dynamic routes here in a, in a Drupal. Of course, that's one of the requirements for the CMS. So uh, ID of the route, book export, path to the route is book slash export slash type slash node. Default is the controller that will be used to the Book export in this situation is that is a Drupal from the book module. Controller, book controller, and the method is book export. Requirement here is that access printer friendly version and entity access is a node view. So what, what does this me fields mean? Defaults, uh, defaults keys are controller, content form, entity form. So control controller is obviously what what it does. Content we specify the controller is set based on the request MIME type. Form, if you need to use some form, you will set up it here. Entity form, if specified, the controller is set HTML entity form, controller content, which responds with specific entity form. Some other fields are uh, uh, requirements keys. So we have permission, role, method, scheme, node access, entity access, and format. So permission, the current user, for example, if you want to serve some static page, user should have access to the content. So you set permission content. Role, the current user must have the specific role, for example, if you want to only premium users to access some content. Method, do you allow get, post, put, whatever. Scheme, set to HTTPS or HTTP. Node add access, if you want to add new nodes to, of some node type. Entity access, checks access for the entities and which mime for what you want to return to the users. OK, let's see how controllers, what are controllers in, in Drupal. Controllers are just regular PHP classes which have some public method that returns some response. So you don't need to extend anything, but there is class that we can extend. It's the only important thing is to have public method which returns the response. In this case, it can return the array. We will see that later. But same as a symphony. So controller, public class, which you define in a root, and it returns the response. OK, so we, can, we, we have object that is control-based and which implements container rejection interface. 
and it has some methods that we need to implement. Sorry, it has some methods that that are helper methods. For example, current user, language manager. So basically, from dependency injection container, it gives us the helper methods to get some services. You can inject them manually, but in this case, you get some some helpers method if you extend control uh, base controller controller base. Uh, conta container injection interface implements public static function create, which is used in a dependency injection uh, as a, in a factory method to create your container. Uh, so if you extend controller base, if you implement the create function here, you don't need to set up your controller as a service. You just need to use create method from the container, you will get all the services you needed. You will return new static logger, func logger factory current user here, and then in construct it is injected on a, on a creating of this object. For this, it is, uh, it's, uh, for this we are using, as I say, factory method, which then can use the create object and create our controller with this kind of dependency injection. Services. Uh, as I already told you at the beginning, everything is a Drupal is a service. So everything is a dependency injection. And if we open the, for example, basic services, you will get the list of a lot of things. And if we dump that in a console, this is just part of the, of the services that you can access to the, to the Drupal. So I don't know, team, team services, user services, access check, security, cache context, whatever you want, you just need to Start reading the APIs or search through the console, try it by yourself. Event listeners are quite, quite important because you know, if you know anything about Drupal, you will know that Drupal used hooks. Hooks were like global functions that you can use for doing something. Now, instead of using hooks, we have even subscriber from the Symfony, and it's quite easy to register new event subscribers. So you need to define a service in your model, you need to tag it to an event subscriber, and everything else is the same as, I as in a symphony. So get subscriber events, and which event you want to do something, and on terminate or, or, or on the request, just define what will happen in your functions. Okay, next part of the talk is building custom model. Uh, it's called Hello PHP UK, it should call Hello PHP Day, but the thing is the, similar, is the same. So the first step is to create description file for your model. So if you want to create model, you need inside modulus folder, create the hello dash underscore, sorry, PHP UK model. In that, you will add the same name of your folder, dot info dot YAML file. And this is only four things that you need to define to have your model working. So when you define name, type, description, core, and package, the Drupal will be able to locate that model inside administration, and you can already install this model. This model doesn't do anything, but you can install it. So this is the complete specification, what you can add in this info file, but you don't need to, to add all the things. You just need to add this file information. Of course, if you are developing something, you have test dependencies here, like Drupal images, or dependencies that you need to use in your model, that's daytime, daytime, link, link, Drupal views. So you can define if you need to use some other contributed model for your model, and then Drupal will know how to manage that. This is the basic what we need to have. So when you define that in a folder with info file, you can install your module. Nothing will happen. You can, of course, uh, after you install your model, you need to uh, clear the cache. So if you have some routing files or something to, to get that working. OK, let's create our first controller. So you will see now the info file and routing file are on the top level, on the root level of our Hello uh, PHP UK model. But inside service controller and Hello PHP, so we are following PSR1, PSR2 structure here. And we need to define it in this way. So in controller, we will define Hello PHP UK controller file. This is just a regular class, which will return new response, hello. And for that, we need to define also the root. So the root here is a path slash hello php uk slash name. Defaults is controller, which we want to use. It's our controller. And permission is to access to the content. Uh, this is why roots works in this way. So 
when you when you are caching the things in a Drupal, uh, this get root definitions goes through every file, which is, which uh, which has this structure will discover your routing file and will add that roots to the in to the other roots. So if we run this in our in our uh, browser, it will say hello UK hi Antonio. Okay, next step is to extend controller base here to see how it works. So we will extend controller base, and in, the, in this controller base we will get some, we want to inject some user services. So in create method, we will get from the container current user service. We will return new static users. With user service in, constru in constructor, we will define that here, and the return new response will be the same, but now we will use this user service display name. Also, we don't need to, uh, in this way, here, we don't need to define controller as a services. We just need, uh, sorry, this is the next step. So this is the same, the same thing as this here. Uh, this is how we define the services. So inside the, fi inside the file, hello phpuk.services.yaml, we define services in the same way as in a Symfony. So we can inject other services. We just define the class of our custom and it looks like here. So say hello generator, it will get the service uh, current user from dependency injection, uh, with dependency injection and public function, we just say hello, same as in response. And we can then refactor the our controller. So the construct will return new response, this say hello, say hello. And it's same thing. Uh, of course, this is the most interesting thing. We can return array. We don't need to return response. And why we can return the array is because of the events I showed you at the beginning. So the HTML renderer and things knows how to handle, uh, how to handle our, our arrays. So here, type is markup, and the markup is say hello, say, uh, this uh, service with say hello method, and it should look like this. We can add uh, dash title, and then the title will show here. So you can just fill, fill the data through the array to your views, and you will get them rendered properly. Uh, last thing is the event subscribers. Um, I told you that event subscribers are changing the hooks. Hooks were like the most important thing in Drupal 7, because you could hook to anything and change anything. Same thing is with uh, event subscribers. So it using it use event dispatcher and event subscribers from the symphony and the way of defining them is the same so you define your service or your class which will be the listener and you tag it with an event subscriber after you did that in your class you just need to do a definition of get subscriber events we will say on kernel request and on kernel request, we will set our custom response, and we will stop propagation of events. This is like if you have some maintaining website or something like that, even in a symphony, you can use this kind of the thing to, before anything happens, just render the site is under maintain uh, temp, uh, response to your, to, your uh, to your visitors. So basically, that's it. It's hooked before anything in uh, that happens. It hook on the first event before anything happens. It runs response and your thing is terminated. Also, if you want to add some custom URLs to to your administration, you don't need to hook with any global functions in Drupal. You just need again to do configuration file. This is here, hello PHP UK links, and you need it to define what you want to link there. So in this situation, we are adding some title description, some parent, and some root name. We will add our root name that we created in a PHP UK routing files. We say that weight or importance is 100, and it will show in our backend, of course, clear cache before, and it is, it is here. It doesn't do anything, just exists there, but if you want, you can, you can add configuration file for your model, you can do whatever actions you want here. So just with few configuration in this module way, you see how you can, how you can handle it. Okay, small recap on this talk is that uh, even if they say that Drupal is not built on a full stack symphony, that's true. It uses a lot of 
things from the Symfony as we are using in a Symfony application. Backbone of the entire Drupal is dependency injection. And dependency injection for controller is quite easy. So you can get any service from the Drupal. You can do whatever you want in your custom model with that. Or if something doesn't exist, you can define that. And then use other, users ca other developers can use it. Of course, if you want to allow users to, to hook to your module, you will, uh, you will dispatch some events inside your module. Modules are something similar to the bundles, not the same. You see the structure of the models doesn't fit to the structure of the bundles, but they are basically plugins, let's call it in that way. Even the plugin means something, something different in a Drupal. Uh, building custom module is quite easy. This was very, very hello world example, but as you are like public, that, uh, like people who doesn't have experience with the Drupal, is it it's quite a good example to see what's happening there. And of course, hardest thing is to start. As, you st as soon as you start, you will get familiar with the things. You will check for the codes, what's extended, what's implemented, and you will see the things at the end are almost same as the Symfony. So this is just beginning, and there is a lot of things to learn from Drupal, about Drupal. Of course, the Symfony goes further. Probably Drupal will go further. They will use, I hope, they will follow the Symfony stacks. So maybe in some future, Drupal will go to the full stack Symfony. Maybe not. Who knows? But at the moment, with your Symfony knowledge, you know already a lot of Drupal. So thank you. If you have any questions, I think we have five minutes for, for questions. <coughs>